Welcome, I'm Jane Hansen, and this week in the arena, some big news in the Big Apple. The Archdiocese gets a new Archbishop, plus a few lessons on charter schools, and from ashes to Easter, the real meaning of Lent. We begin with the big announcement Monday in Manhattan. Archbishop Timothy Dolan has been picked to replace retiring Cardinal Edward Egan as Archbishop of New York. It is a seat at the center of what Pope John Paul II called the capital of the world. Here to discuss the implications of this important move, Father Kieran Harrington, Vicar of Communications for the Diocese of Brooklyn. Elizabeth Scalia, contributor to Inside Catholic, who also writes the popular blog, The Anchoress. And Father John Cush, who was a student of Archbishop Dolan's in Rome. So Father Cush, you get first dibs. Are you surprised at where his career has taken him? Absolutely not. I had gone to Rome as a student with Archbishop Dolan. I was chosen, Bishop Daly was the Bishop of Brooklyn at the time, and he asked me if I'd be willing to study in Rome. And I said, of course, I was very honored to be asked. And the rector that was appointed at that time, that uh, August when we went was Archbishop Dolan. And he started as Father Dolan, coming right at Kendrick Lennon Seminary in, uh, over in uh, St. Louis. And he was amazing, a kind, ordinary, but absolutely brilliant, brilliant man, a great teacher, a great rector. How do you think he would like these descriptions we've been hearing about him as a gregarious football-sized prelate? I think he'd probably have heard it before. I mean, he's a, he's a guy that can talk to people. He's a person. His insight into people is absolutely amazing. He, can, he knew each of us. There were about 180 of us at the North American College when he was rector. I was there with him from 94 to 99, and the archbishop was there from 94 to 2001. And uh, he got to know each of his men. And the fact that uh, we would see him on a daily basis, get to interact with him, he was someone that we always knew cared for us, and he cared for his priesthood. He was a person of prayer. He was very faithful to the doctor of the church. And when I had him for American Catholic Church history over at the Gregorian University, he was an amazing professor. In fact, I still have his notes, and I've used them myself several times as a teacher now myself. John, he, uh, when he had uh, just finished as rector of the North American College, he uh, published a book, Priest of the Third Millennium. Yes, right? indeed. And uh, that was a series of, of spiritual director's conferences. Those were his rector's conference, actually. Right. When he was rector of North American College, about once a month, the first Sunday of the month, mm -hmm. he'd give a rector's conference. And we'd gather before evening prayer in the chapel. And he always wanted to have it in the chapel as opposed to in the auditorium mm -hmm. because he felt by being in the presence of the Blessed Sacrament, we'd be more open to what he was trying to teach us. And uh, What was the most memorable uh, conference? I would just say some of his stories on Father Shilly, his pastor growing up as a boy, uh, mm -hmm. some of the stories about his mom, Shirley, and all the other different things that Who he was. Who was a like. cook at a Yes, rectory. indeed. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. So they, uh, Back then, uh, Monsignor Dolan was uh, just an amazingly good storyteller. With his rector's conference, you'd think that he was, you know, speaking off the top of his head, but every single word that he had was written down. And that's really? how he was able to come up years later. We, I, I know a priest friend of mine said, you know, I have that uh, book, Priest of the Really, What a great book. And I said, well, I lived through that book. That was our formation. And his big thing was forming us uh, in the four pillars. Uh, intellectual, spiritual, pastoral, and human, but just a tremendously good, good man. Just imagine that, a storyteller becoming the Archbishop of mm. New York. Gee, what a tough time for New Yorkers to accept that, huh? Perfect, right? I think it was a, a very appropriate place. I mean, you mentioned, Jane, New York's the capital of the world. And when you consider the media capital of the world especially, and what a communicator Archbishop Dolan is, I, I think it's phenomenal for the city, and I think it's great for the church in the United States. Elizabeth, I know that you have some thoughts about this new Archbishop. Um, you haven't necessarily been the biggest fan of Cardinal Egan's. To be fair to Carl, Cardinal Egan, I think that it wasn't always a great fit, uh, him in New York City. I think he was very well suited to the, uh, the quieter uh, Bridgehampton, Connecticut uh, venue that he'd be, he came to us from. I think Father Egan, Cardinal Egan, I think Cardinal Egan, uh, his diffidence and his inaccessibility or the sense one had of his inaccessibility didn't work with New York. New Yorkers, I think, like to have someone in leadership who as I've said before, can rub elbows with the swells and also have a hot dog at Yankee Stadium and seem just as graceful in both venues. And I think Dolan can do that. I think Egan couldn't. I think, but, Elizabeth, though, uh, I would just take issue with that uh, representation of the Cardinal because in my impression, having, uh, having seen him at a parish level, uh, he was really fantastic 
in terms of how he dealt with people. He was great at confirmations. Uh, he was in our diocese to come to parishes, and he immediately was very warm, very approachable to the people. So I suspect that in some level, uh, not to make this a discussion about Cardinal Egan, but I think on some level there was a misrepresentation of his public persona. And the public uh, didn't get to see that side of they him. They didn't. So I guess your argument really would be, Elizabeth, that we, we really want to get to know this archbishop, this yeah. new archbishop, and really get to understand what, uh, to, to separate, to, to not to be so separate or not to, not to have that kind of diffidence, I think was the word that you used, the um, appearance. Yeah, and I think that Dolan will be a man who can get out there and mix it up in the street uh, with the publicans and mm. the, the the politicians, yes. and yeah. in that sense, he will, I think, pick up what was what we've been missing from uh, John O'Connor. Is he going to be strong enough, though? I mean, uh, as the Archbishop of uh, Milwaukee, he went into a situation that was somewhat difficult. Uh, there were the priest of the Archdiocese of Milwaukee had written uh, written to the uh, written to I believe to the Pope asking for uh, that the mandated. Uh, mandate of clerical celibacy be lifted. Um, how do you think he's going to handle some of these very, very difficult questions? Uh? I think that he's been a pastor, he's been the rector at the um, North, American North American College. College, and he's been a bishop. It's going to give him peculiar insight into all of those concerns, the concerns of his priest and the concerns of the people. He came from, you know, Midwestern common stock and that's going to give him a lot of insight into how to approach his new diocese and his new, mm -hmm. his new flock. I think that he's, I think he has the ability to reach through um, the filter of the television or the filter of the crowd and the filter of the press and speak to everybody at the level they need to, to reach people on the level that they they're looking to be reached. Does that make sense? Sure. You know what? I found one thing he said. I was reading, watching one interview just recently uh, after he became the Archbishop of New York, and they were asking him, uh, you know, the criticism of uh, SNAP and some uh, victims' advocacy groups. SNAP stands S for? S uh, Survivors Network of Those Abused by Priests. Right. So, so those or, or those groups that have uh, people been hurt in the church. And, and one of the questions was, was uh, you know, their charge uh, against Archbishop Dolan was is he hasn't done enough in uh, in uh, Milwaukee and the question was was Archbishop what's your response to that and which I thought was beautiful he said you know maybe they're right maybe there is more we could have done uh, and you know he said every night I go to bed and I think about what more I could do to protect children so what I like about Archbishop Dolan is this is sort of refreshing honesty this ability to be self-critical this ability to really consider each way, each day you know how do we go forward as a church uh, and as a people. I would suspect that that's something that would be really cherished by the, the Catholics in New York, but also Catholics everywhere. The thing to realize about Archbishop Dolan more than anything else is that he's a historian. He is a historian. He knows what he's talking about. He, and when he teaches history, what he looked at for us in class was just not only to look at the institution but also to look at the grassroots, to take both. He went through the, uh, again, he said his bias was obviously because he was teaching American Roman Catholic Church history, was to put the focus in, you know, on the, on the institution, to focus on the bishops and the formation of the diocese and everything. And again, when his, uh, I believe his first, uh, his titular of the when he was appointed, I'm not certain if I remember how it was Bardstown, which was one oh, of the first, yeah, and right. it was suppressed later on, one of the first dioceses ever. So for him, that was a big thing when he was made auxiliary of uh, St. Louis Archdiocese in 2001, which was on this 25th anniversary of priesthood. But the funny thing is, he looks at, I, I remember one class in particular he did on, and I think especially for New York, immigration. He broke it down into the seven ethnic groups, and he talked about, for instance, the German Triangle. Uh, from uh, up from Minnesota to Chicago down to St. Louis okay. and things along those lines that he would actually be able to br everything for him even though he appears you know just very uh, all, all over the place and he, he's very systematic and he knows exactly what he wants to say. Well we've got to move on but one last question which team do you think he's going to support in New York? Well, the joke we were saying before is so he obviously won us what the Cardinals eventually, but uh, <laughs> I think he'll be loyal to New York. I, I have to think that he's going to to go for the Yankees because he is a historian. Mm -hmm. He knows what good things. And I and it. I really want to I, I want to wish him well. I think you know, 
he went into a bad situation in Milwaukee and a, a situation where there was distrust and he created trust and that bodes very well for him but I would like to give him the the bit of advice that Derek Jeter gave to George W. Bush after 9-11 when the president went to throw out the first pitch Jeter said to him this is New York don't bounce it they'll boo you <laughs> <laughs> and you want to weigh in on that yeah well listen I think basically uh, Archbishop Dolan, he roots for the underdog, so he's going to root for the New York Mets. He's going to be rooting for Brooklyn and Queens. There you go. <laughs> I'm sure he will be, but we are going to find all of that out as we get to know this new Archbishop Dolan. Thank you so much for being My with pleasure. us, Father Cush. Really appreciate it. We are going to take a break, but when we come back, more on a story that has had a big impact on the Brooklyn side of the East River, charter schools. Stay with us.